the only way that we can continue to grow and develop is to be talking about teaching and learning, to be able to have that chance to dialogue and to get feedback. With development of technology moving at such a fast pace and changes in culture, it is always important to continue to relook at how you teach. To even consider volunteering to be in this program, you have to have an interest in wanting to improve your teaching. Although the disciplines are different, the problems that we grapple with are the same. You learn a lot not only about uh, how other people teach, but about what uh, is important in other disciplines. We as teachers are still learning, and we're learning not only about our, our, our material uh, that we teach, but we are also learning on how we can deliver that to the students. The real idea is to be able to talk about teaching and learning, what's happening in your classroom, get feedback and share ideas. My involvement with the Peer Collaboration Network started a couple of years ago. I want you to shut down your laptops and put them away. I was approached by Dave Andrews about uh, sitting in my classroom and observing what I was doing and providing some constructive feedback on my performance in the classroom. There was no question there was some stress there. The fact that it was a peer, I don't think that stress would have been nearly as high as if it was an administrator that was actually coming in to, you know, quote unquote, evaluate my performance. I think that's a definite concern for people that it will become sort of a standardized mechanism for evaluation. But I think the fact that it's a collaborative network in the sense that you're evaluating me, but I get to come back and evaluate you as well. It makes it more about speaking and having that conversation about what are the most effective ways to reach our students. One of the essential features of the Peer Collaboration Network is the confidentiality. You know, we need to make sure that, that what happens in my classroom, what you observe or what I observe is between the two of us. In other parts of the world, peer observation of teaching is really quite common and is actually a requirement in academia. The approach that we've incorporated is the peer collaboration model is actually peer-to-peer. -peer. So one faculty member to another providing specific feedback on something that is important to me. The critical part about it coming from faculty uh, to improve means that it is really about being formative. It's about helping each other improve, not about judgment. It completely changes the dynamics of the exchange. It actually is a network, not an evaluation tool. And so in terms of continually improving the university, I think a peer collaboration network is a much more powerful and systematic tool for continual improvement. The Peer Collaboration Network is in its preliminary stages, if you will. We have uh, uh, quite a number of, and a growing number of participants, a number of different academic units that are, that are involved. But the goal is to uh, expand this network across all academic units on campus. The way the program is developed, it's based on a three-meeting model. The first meeting is an opportunity to sit down with the person who's coming into your class and discuss what the course is about, what some of your learning objectives are and so forth. And then there's a, a checklist that you as the observee gets to select, you know, five or six of those that you want to have the observer really focus their attention on. The second meeting is the actual classroom visit. And at that follow-up meeting, you know, you sit down with the observer and that person provides you with feedback. I think in every case, you know, if you set aside a half hour discussion, it ends up being an hour discussion because things just snowball, you know, you, 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 start, you start getting carried away with all these ideas and the feedback that you get at the other end is very conversational and, and very constructive and every time I come out of one of those meetings, I'm, I'm enthused. It's a support network and that's how I see it and um, I've actually now gone back to my department and spoken to my department head about it and he also thought it was a great idea too and so maybe this is something that we may bring into our own department and within their faculty as well. Peer collaboration is not a one-off thing. I plan with Judy that every year, once or twice a year, she will come in and she will review a different aspect of teaching. The, the major benefit, I think, of participating in the network and, and having it grow is that 
we, we get everyone to the point where they believe that the development of teaching, uh, regardless of the stage in your career, um, is the same or is, is as important as the development of your research. It's an open door and um, I would welcome anybody to, to get involved. It's a, been a great experience for me and I can assure them that it'll be a, a positive experience for, for them moving forward. It's an important component. I think if they are interested, simply just contacting someone from the PCN network and talk about it. We've actually done a pilot study and the feedback that people who are involved in the network have provided us have been resoundingly positive. The comments that they have made have been really affirming of the benefit of the peer collaboration network and I think that's probably one of the things that I'd like people to take away is that you know this really is a phenomenal opportunity that we have here where you can have a discussion, you can have a dialogue about teaching and learning and you can get additional feedback in your classroom and, and learn from each other and continue to, to develop as an individual, as a professional, as a teacher and I think it's through those conversations that we'll make the university even better than we are and how great for our students that we care that much about teaching and learning and are willing to be able to be vulnerable once in a while, to be able to expand, to be able to have those discussions, to try new ideas for teaching and learning with the ultimate goal is benefiting our students.